My name is Dr. Graham Young. I'm a trainee psychiatrist working in Northern Ireland. And today I'm going to talk about dementia, a condition which is desperately familiar to so many of us. Well, the thing about dementia is it's so common. We know that at the minute, there's approximately 850,000 people in the UK diagnosed with dementia. We know that age is the biggest risk factor for dementia. And we have an aging population. That means that in 2025, there could be over 1 million people with dementia. And by the time we get to 2051, there could be over 2 million people in the UK diagnosed with dementia. In the course of this podcast, I will cover three major take-home points. Number one, what is dementia? Are there different types? And does it just affect memory? Or are there any other signs and symptoms? Number two, who gets dementia? Does it just affect us as we get older? or are there any other risk factors? And number three, what can be done about dementia? So we'll look at the latest evidence-based treatments that are out there. Many people think of dementia as affecting memory, but we know that it's so much more than that. And the World Health Organization defined dementia as a syndrome which results in the deterioration in memory, thinking, behavior, and the ability to perform everyday activities. But let's think about what that definition actually means. It affects memory, that's short-term memory, so the ability to learn new information, such as recent events or appointments, or even getting used to a new environment. It affects thinking, so the ability to understand and take part in conversation due to difficulties with finding and understanding words. This can obviously be so frustrating for people with dementia that they can't take part in family discussions, for example. It affects behavior in two main ways. It can affect the emotional and the mental parts of behavior with an exaggeration or even a change in personality where a previously polite and proper person may become irritable and rude or even very suspicious of family and friends. It affects movement behavior as well. So there can be trembling in the hands, there can be stiffness in the limbs and difficulty walking with a risk of falls. All of these aspects combine to impact our ability to perform everyday activities. For example, driving or managing finances and paying bills, preparing meals, doing housework or even just washing and dressing. Dementia is an umbrella term. It covers lots of different types or causes of brain disease. And the most common type we see is Alzheimer's disease with over 60% of cases. In Alzheimer's disease, it helps to think of the brain as made of cells called neurons and connections called synapses. In Alzheimer's disease, there is loss of both the cells and the connections. And this reduces brain volume, also known as atrophy, and can also reduce the amount of a chemical messenger in the brain called acetylcholine. If we look at Alzheimer's disease brains at a cellular level, we see two main changes. There's abnormal collections of protein outside of the cells called beta amyloid plaques and abnormal collections of protein inside the cells called neurofibrillary tangles. Alzheimer's disease is often described as progressive, which means that the symptoms deteriorate over time. And this is due to the accumulation of these changes in the brain. The next most common type of dementia is vascular dementia. The vascular bit refers to the vessels that supply the brain cells with blood, oxygen and nutrients. If there's a disruption in the supply, this results in brain cell death and gives the symptoms that we see. Vascular dementia tends to have a more abrupt onset and a stepwise deterioration. It is of course possible to have both Alzheimer's type changes and vascular type changes in the brain. And this is called a mixed dementia and is the third most common type that we see. The fourth most common is dementia with Lewy bodies. The Lewy body bit refers to another abnormal collection of protein inside the cells. And this is thought to cause the symptoms that we see. The symptoms are a combination of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. So that confusion can vary from day to day. It can result in visual hallucinations, 
where people see things that aren't there, which can be such a scary experience for people. And there's also a risk of falls as movement is affected. There are, there are other less common types of dementia, for example, frontotemporal dementia, which tends to affect younger people, affecting the front part of the brain that helps to look after our emotions and how we feel and our behaviours. And then there are genetic causes such as Huntington's disease and infective causes, for example, HIV related dementia, but these are much less common. So to summarise that first major take home point, there's lots of different types of dementia, Alzheimer's being the most common, and it does affect our memory, but it also affects our thinking and our behaviour and our ability to perform those everyday activities. Now let's think of that second major take home point, who gets dementia? We said at the top of the podcast that dementia is incredibly common. There are currently 850,000 people in the UK diagnosed with dementia. We know that the biggest risk factor for dementia is age. In the 65 year old population, there's a 1% risk of having dementia. But for every five years, this risk doubles until the age of 90, where there's a 30 to 40% risk of having dementia. Let's think why this might be. Many of us are familiar with wear and tear on our car. This can affect different parts of the car, like the wheels or the brakes. This can also happen in our bodies, where it affects our muscles, our skin and our organs, including our brain. Also, as we get older, there's a risk of accumulating other medical problems. For example, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol and even strokes can all increase that risk of developing dementia. The way we live our lives can also play a massive role in the development of dementia. For example, we know that smoking increases that risk and many people like a drink of alcohol, but too much alcohol also increases that risk. Our genes play an important role. Women are at a higher risk of developing Alzheimer's dementia and men at a higher risk of vascular dementia. And also our family history has an impact as well. This is an area we often ask about at clinic, but at present it's very rare that we would be testing for these genes on a routine basis. But this is maybe something for the future that will become more prominent in our practice. We know there are two main types of genes in Alzheimer's disease. On the one hand, there are genes which increase the risk of developing that later onset, more common type of dementia, of an Alzheimer's type. This is called the E4 allele of apolipoprotein E. On the other hand, there are genes which can directly cause dementia, and this tends to be the less common, younger onset Alzheimer's disease. The three main genes involved in this are the amyloid precursor protein genes and the two presenilin genes, presenilin 1 and presenilin 2. Now let's think about that third major take home point, what can be done about dementia? That largely depends on the type of dementia, the severity and an individual person's circumstances. It's important to note that there is no cure for dementia at present, but there are lots of other options out there to help. There's medications, so we've got the acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Let's think about what that means. Well, in Alzheimer's disease, we spoke about a reduction in the level of that chemical messenger, acetylcholine. These medications can boost the level of acetylcholine and can temporarily improve the memory or slow down the progression of memory loss. This is typically used in a mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. And the three members of this family are donepezil, rivastigmine and galantamine. The other medication used is called memantine. Again, if we think of the brain in Alzheimer's disease, when brain cells die, they release another chemical messenger called glutamate. If levels of glutamate are too high, these can be damaging and toxic to brain cells. And memantine helps to block that effect, turning down the background noise in the brain. This medication is used in a more severe type of Alzheimer's disease or if the other type of medication cannot be used. 
But of course, it's not just medications. We know that it, the way we live our lives can have a massive impact on the progression of dementia. And this takes us back to those risk factors we discussed. Some risk factors are modifiable, which means that we can do something about them. For example, we can cut down or stop smoking. This can be very difficult, but you can of course get some help from your doctor about this. Not taking too much alcohol and also keeping your physical health under control can all reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and other dementias progressing. We know that it helps to keep active and independent for as long as possible. So keeping physically active with, with swimming, walking, gardening, or even doing exercises in the chair. It's important to keep connected socially with families and friends. So going out for coffee or going for meals. There's of course some other options out there, such as a local memory cafe or group cognitive stimulation a psychological treatment which can, in some cases, boost the memory. There's also reminiscence groups, which gives people the opportunity to discuss past events and experiences and can really be good fun for people with dementia. It's vitally important to keep mentally active, so doing crosswords and board games or even card games. So let's summarise on those three main take-home points about dementia. There's lots of different types of dementia, Alzheimer's is the most common and it affects our memory, but also our thinking, our behaviour and our ability to perform everyday activities. Dementia is incredibly common and that risk increases as we get older, but also with other medical conditions, aspects of how we live our life and our genetics. And we've looked at the different treatments for dementia, which include medications, changes to those modifiable risk factors and also the importance of keeping physically, socially and mentally active. In the last couple of minutes of this podcast I'm going to tell you about how you can find out some more information about dementia. There's some great websites out there. The Royal College of Psychiatry website provides reliable easy to read information about diagnosis and treatment and we'll recap on some of the themes that we've discussed in this podcast. There's also the Alzheimer's Society website, which provides information in different formats, for example, graphics and videos. It provides such useful tips on living well with dementia and how to plan for the future. It's also interesting to consider other people's perspectives of dementia and their stories. For example, Still Alice, an Oscar-winning movie starring Julianne Moore. This tells a story of a linguistics professor in America who was diagnosed with a rare young onset Alzheimer's disease. It's the story of how her and her family really came to terms with that early diagnosis and progression through the condition. And it's a very heartbreaking film to watch, but inspirational at the same time. Another option is Lost Domain, a studio album released by Tim Wheeler, lead singer of Northern Irish rock band Ash, who produced this solo album as an elegy to his father, who was diagnosed with late onset Alzheimer's disease. This carries a particular personal interest to me, as Tim's father was admitted to a dementia ward that I worked on a couple of years later. I certainly loved working in this ward. I really enjoyed working with people with dementia and their families and trying to help them through this difficult time in their lives. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast and I hope you found it useful and interesting.